All right, let's look at our exponential graphs. So again, we've got our equation of our function. So a lot of times it is written like this, our f of x equals a with b in the parentheses and x is our exponent. And this is what we were talking about before. It really is y equals a, open parentheses, 1, plus or minus r, close parentheses, oh, you can't see that, with t is our exponent. My handwriting is awful this morning. Um, they just normally, whenever we see them written out, which is closer to the bottom, they just go ahead and do 1 plus whatever the rate is. And then um, our t generally is what's going to be our variable, which is our x. Um, so you'll see that. So that's all that that is. It's the same, same equation. So again, we have two different exponential equations. We've got a, a growth function and a decay function. And our growth function is going to be if this b, the number in the parentheses, so this is the, the b is the number in the parentheses, if it is greater than 1, then it's going to be a growth function. That means that um, our word problem, whatever we're looking at, said increased. It, something got bigger. And so let me show you, this is what our two different growth functions look like on the graph. And so an exponential growth goes up from left to right. So what I want you to do in order to determine whether these are growth or decay, I want you to start at, at the left side of your graph. And I want, to take, you want you to take your finger or your fingernail and trace it and see which way you're going. Look, see how my finger is going up? It's going up. That means it's growth. I'm starting at the left, and I'm going up with my finger. So that means it's growth. So then the flip side is true for the decay function. Then my b, my number inside my parentheses, is going to be less than 1. So our exponential decay goes down. So whenever I trace from left to right, still same process. I'm starting at the left because that's where we start reading from. And then I'm, my finger's going down. I'm starting at the left, and my finger's going down. So it's decay. So there is no reason for you to remember or memorize what these graphs look like to determine whether they are growth or decay. Take your finger from the left to the right, up, growth. Left to the right, oh, I'm going down, decay. Easy as that. So the only other part of these functions is this thing called an asymptote. And what this basically says, even though it's very blurry, let's see if I can clear that up, is an asymptote, and I'm going to spell it out right here, it's not spelled how you would think, is represented by a dashed line and acts as a wall where the function goes flat. So, you see how this graph, it starts bottoming out bottoming out. This one starts topping out, bottoming out, bottoming out. So that means that it's hitting this wall, this invisible wall that's called an asymptote. And that's just a invisible line. So this one, let's see if this green will show up. Right here, there's this invisible line that this graph is never going to touch and it's never going to cross. It's going it, to, it's going to look like it gets really, 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 really close to it, and it's going to get really close, like 0 0.000001 close to it. But it's never, ever, 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 ever going to touch it or cross it. So then this one would be right here, this one would be right here, and this one would be right here. Okay? So that's our invisible line. So as soon as you see the graph start starting to bottom out, then there's a line right there, and we write that line as a y equals line because it's a horizontal line. Um, what else does it say? It will be the number after the x in the equation. So I'm going to show you some examples down here and how we determine everything. So looking at the graph, again, let's determine whether it's growth or decay by following it and tracing it with our fingers. So starting at the left, and I'm going up, growth. All right. So you see here where it's bottoming out, 
that's where my asymptote is. And I said that we write those as y equals line. So we write as y equals and then the number that it's hitting at. So that's 1, 2. So y equals 2. Okay. Starting at the leftmost value, my finger is going down. So we've got a decay. Where is it bottoming out at? Again, y equals, always y equals. And that is at negative 4. So this last example, tracing, tracing. Oh, I'm going down. That's a decay. This example doesn't have it drawn out for you, but we can see where's this topping out at right here. So again, y equals, and then I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's y equals 8. That's topping out at. And in all transparency, we do have another asymptote, a vertical asymptote, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, there will be eventually a invisible line here will, where it will never touch, but we're not going to um, even worry about that right now. We are just looking at where it's bottoming out at or where it's topping out at. So the y equals line, these horizontal asymptotes. So we can do these three examples two different ways. So I'm going to show you the first way by just looking at the equation, whether it's a growth or decay, an asymptote, and then for the second one, I'll show you the other way. So here we can remember, we can remember, if you want to remember, okay, that this number inside is our B. And we said that if B is greater than 1, then it's growth. And if it's less than 1, it's a decay. So this is greater than 1. So my B is greater than 1. So then that means it's a growth. And then this little note right here that's hard to read is says that the number after the x is our asymptote. So again, y equals, and what's the number after everything? That's 3, so that's where our asymptote is. All right, if you cannot remember those rules, which you don't have to, you never have to remember anything because we have all of these great resources. So I can go to my graph, and I got one. Delete whatever's in there. Delete, and then press menu, going to graph three. We're graphing a function one. And then I'm going to type in everything after the equal sign exactly like I see it. So two open parentheses, 0.5, close parentheses, arrow up, x, arrow over, minus one. So I have got it exactly like it. See, it, it, this looks exactly the same. f of x equals 2x times 0.5x. Now I can see my graph. So I can, now I have this. And so now I can pull out those things. So I'm going to trace from left to right. I'm going down. So that's a decay. And then my asymptote, remember that's a y equals line right where it's bottoming out. So where is that bottoming out? That's negative 1. So y equals negative 1. Does that fit with our rules? B is less than 1, so it's decay. Negative 1 is out here, so y equals negative 1. That makes sense. This last example, let's look at it. B is greater than 1, so it's a growth. Here's what I'm going to do with this one. You can do this like this if you remember these rules. And then let's check ourselves in our calculator. So our asymptote is at y equals whatever's coming after all of our stuff. And there's nothing coming after our stuff. So then that means y equals 0. There's always going to be that horizontal asymptote. So even when you see no numbers after it, it's at y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and check myself, see if I did this right by typing it in. We got 3 times open parentheses, 1.5, close parentheses, raised to x. Enter. Start always, always, always. It's really tempting to start at this, this top piece. Always, 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 always start at the left-hand side, and I'm going up. Growth, that's right. Or is it bottoming out at y equals 0? So we did it right.